There we go. Good morning. I hope that you, you can say the same thing, that you're going to heaven one day. And the choir did a great job this morning. Thank you. So good to see all of you out this morning. A couple of prayer requests this morning. Uh, be with Ben Holland. Uh, that's Tyler and Nick's dad. Be with him this morning. I think he's still in the hospital. Also be with the family of uh, Angela Borden. She passed away yesterday. That is uh, some good friends of ours. Adam was the bass player for Gold City for a while. Uh, be with Brother Max this morning. He brings the message. Uh, Brother Mike and Miss Donna, I think even Zach and the family, they're going to see uh, Lydia get baptized this morning. So they're over there. So pray for them as they travel. Also remember our revival coming up in a few weeks. So be prayer for that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for another day of life. Lord, thank you for this church and their willingness to serve and their just obedience, Lord, to be in the Lord's house this morning. I pray that you would be with those that are hurting this morning, Lord. Just touch them in a mighty, in a, in a mighty way, Lord, that they would look up to you for guidance. But give them peace. Give them uh, clarity and give the ones that are uh, taking care of them, Lord. Just be with them. Be with those that don't know you this morning. I pray that, Lord, you be with Brother Max as he brings a message. Also be with Brother Mike as they are gone this morning. Just bless them in a mighty way. It's your name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Other announcements this morning that Brother Mike wanted me to mention this Wednesday night will be our quarterly business meeting. It'll be Wednesday night at 6.30. Also, there is a new study going on every Wednesday night at 6.30 in the fellowship hall. It is called The Heart of the Family. It's a six-week study to a happier and healthy marriage. So if you can, try to support that. Also, like I mentioned earlier, Revival will be February 27th through March the 2nd. Uh, Brother Bob Pittman and Phil Cross is leading the music. Uh, Joseph Habedank will be in concert here on March the 6th at 6 p.m. That's a Sunday night. If you can, come out and support that as a great singer. Uh, also, the month of April starts our Hallelujah for the Cross, where we put up the crosses in front of the church. So be thinking about that and uh, what you want to do with that. So, Also, another thing we need to mention last, finally... Uh, we have over across the road, the Sardis basketball teams did well this week in the county tournament. Uh, the varsity boys and girls got first place in the county. And then our uh, junior, uh, junior varsity girls got first place. And the junior varsity boys got second place. And also, our very own Caroline Johnson was MVP of the girls. I think she's, yeah, she's here. So, great job and great fun. So, Congratulations to them. If you would, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. If you would, please stand. Let's all sing this morning. Just a little talk with Jesus. I once was lost in sin. Worship the Lord.
within my master's house. The open sky is but a portion of his yard. Amen. Amen. Well, we probably don't really realize how big our God really is. We know He's big. I, in my readings of the recent days, I, in Jeremiah and also in Genesis, uh, I've read the statement a, a couple of times. Is anything too hard for God? And the question is obviously no. Well, I know Brother Mike is excited today. I'm excited about having an opportunity to share God's Word with us today. And Brother Mike uh, is getting to baptize a granddaughter. And uh, I know that joy. And I know that he's excited about that experience today. And so I don't know if their service is at 10 or 11 or what time, but I know it'll be an exciting time for him. And some of my favorite pictures as I go through my phone is seeing some pictures of uh, precious granddaughters that I've had the privilege uh, to baptize. Well, I want to invite you to open the Word of God today to the book of James chapter 1. The book of James chapter 1, and we will look at uh, verse 21. Begin reading with verse 21 through verse 25 from the book of James. I was sharing with someone uh, before service, uh, if we were studying the book uh, in its entirety, we would talk about the fact that James was a half-brother of Jesus, and he was a skeptic until the resurrection, and what an impact the resurrection had on him. He was one of those, a half-brother of the Lord Jesus, who made fun of him and was a skeptic, but became a staunch follower of the Lord Jesus. Before we read this passage, uh, could we pray together again? Our Father and our God in heaven, as we come before you today, we come with grateful hearts for the privilege that we have of 
of opening your word and sharing your word together and pray for brother mike and his family as they share a wonderful experience as this uh, precious grandchild confesses their faith by believers baptism father we would like to pray for the brothers and sisters in christ around the world many that are in fear of their lives even today that have been hunted down and slaughtered because simply because they believe in you we pray for them father we pray for the many that are ill today so many from our community and our state and our nation and father we lift them to you and we pray that there would be a deliverance from the pandemic that we're experiencing in our country and then for those that have lost loved ones uh, we lift them to you and continue to pray for your grace and strength and guidance in their lives. And Father, in particular, we want to pray for this service today that we might honor and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, that you might move in our hearts as we study your word. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, if the scripture's on the screen, it might have a word or two different. I'm reading from the New King James today because there's one word it makes a little bit more uh, clear for us today. Beginning in verse 21, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If I give a title to this study of this passage of Scripture, it would be this, The Blessed Believer. Now, this passage of Scripture is written to us who are believers. Now, I realize that you probably are saying, well, Max, I know of a lot of passages that tells us how to be blessed, and I would agree with you. But in this passage of Scripture, it concludes by telling us that if we do this, we will be blessed. And uh, I think that it would be the desire of most of us today, if not all believers, to be blessed. I, uh, before the beginning of the uh, football season this past fall, I read a statement made by one of the professional football uh, team coaches, and he made this statement. He was referring to a player that played last year, and he said he was, he underperformed, he underperformed as a player. Now, what he was saying was that here was a young man who had come through college and now he's in the NFL he has the ability and he has the knowledge and he has the skill to do a lot better than he did now that was convicting to me because when I read that I remembered back to high school days and football days and I'm not proud of it in any form or fashion, but it's true that I have to confess that I, too, was an underperformer. Now, don't misunderstand. I'm not saying that uh, if I had done a little better, the, co the colleges would be sending me letters and contacting me. Nobody would have been doing that. I was too slow. But... Uh, I could have done better than what I did, and I'm embarrassed about that. I wish I'd have done better. Back in the old days, and uh, we, you played offense and defense, uh, went both ways. And uh, my favorite was defense. I played in, and 
I was not fast enough really to outrun uh, the, the people that I needed to outrun on offense. And I guess my interest was being a spoiler. I enjoyed playing defense and being a spoiler. And I could have done better. I read another statement recently by a coach whose name I don't know. But this is what he said. As a coach, I care less about the, your potential and more about what you do with it. The world is full of gifted underachievers. And I thought about it, and I thought about football and enjoy watching football. And I'm sure there are other underachievers. But I kind of brought the passage home to where I live today into my own personal life and thought about us as Christians. I wonder how many of us are underachievers. Are we underperform as believers? In other words, we have, we have the gifts and we have the knowledge, but we don't live up to our potential. One day we'll stand before Jesus Christ. There's a judgment seat, uh, and we'll stand before Christ. And we will give an account of our life, of everything done in our lives. And there will be rewards and recognitions. But if we stood before Jesus today, Is there a chance that some of us would have to say we're underachievers? In this passage of Scripture, it deals with some things that I believe that we need to know. There are three things that I want to call your attention to as we think about being a blessed believer. First of all, we must prepare our hearts for the Word. That's what he says in verse 21, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word. You see, before that you and I can receive the word of God and allow it to prepare us to be what we need to be, we have to prepare ourselves to receive the Word of God. Now, I just asked you a question, and uh, don't, don't give a testimony, positive or negative, but I wonder how many today could say, I spent some time before I came here today preparing my heart to receive the Word of God. I spent some time preparing my heart to receive the Word of God. We prepare for a lot of other things. But if we're going to receive the Word of God into our lives, we have to prepare our hearts. Now, I would assume that somebody in your house carries out the garbage. It seems like sometimes in some homes that's not true. In our home, that's my job. I, I'm not qualified for a lot, but I'm qualified to carry out the garbage. I do a really good job of it. We have to put it out on Friday, and I look across my neighbor every morning to see if it's a day to carry it out or not. And so I see if he's got his out, I need to carry mine out. But, and then we go to the grocery store, take a sack of money now, go to the grocery store with a sack of money and buy groceries, and we bring, bring in some fresh things and new things. But you carry out the old. You see, in our lives, we have to do the same thing. If we're going to get the Word of God into our life, we can't have a lot of junk in our mind in our life. Or the Word's not going to get in there. Most likely, for the vast majority of us, have some type of heat system in our home that has a filter. 
And if you want to get good, fresh, warm air like now or cool air, you're going to have to clean out your filter. And sometimes those that are in that business, they go to homes and, and uh, somebody will call and say, my unit's not working right. And they'll go and the first thing they do is check your filter. And I fear that many of us come to the place of, of worship or Bible study and we've not prepared our heart. We're just there. And we need to have a time of confession and preparation. Now, I know, I know it's challenging on Sunday morning. It's challenging for us. It's challenging for everybody. I'm just old enough that I wake up real early. Young people don't, I guess. And if you have children and you're trying to get them ready and whatever, our kids used to, they tell stories now how that when I was pastor at White before I went to seminary that we'd be headed to church with our three kids and Judy would have, the, have some kind of lotion out with a handkerchief trying to clean one of the kids' faces so it'd be clean when we got to church. It's not easy, I know. But maybe you do it on Sunday night. And it's interesting word that he uses here. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness. And that's a word, a Greek word, from which we get the word earwax from. Isn't that interesting? I don't know if you've ever had a hearing test or not. I, I have. I've had a few hearing tests, and they said I needed hearing aids, and, and uh, I got some hearing aids. I've just not, ha I've not figured out how to wear glasses and hearing aids and a wireless mic all at the same time. So I don't have them today. But if you have a hearing test, they're going to tell you to make sure that you have cleaned your ears out and get all of the earwax out. I'm not trying to be gross, but you got to get it all out or the hearing test will not be accurate. And in light physically, we need to get our ears cleaned out for a hearing test. We need to be prepared to receive the Word. And as one who's tried to preach for a number of years in different places, in different settings, I've come to believe as I observe the congregation and people, and I don't know what's in their heart, but I've just felt that it's not going anywhere. There's earwax, so to speak. So we need to prepare our hearts. We need to be serious about the Word of God. If we're serious about the Word of God, we want to receive the Word of God. And so we'll make preparation to get it and receive it. But there's a second truth in this passage of Scripture. And it is this, that we must receive the Word of God with meekness. Verse 21 Again, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word. These are action statements. Lay aside. Paul wrote to the church at Colossae and he said, put, lay aside, put away all anger and wrath and lying. And the person who comes who's filled, filled with anger and filled with wrath and a lot of those other things, the Word's not going to get through because that's bottling their minds. But he says that we must receive the Word of God with meekness. Could I ask you a question? What do you believe about the Word of God? What do you think about the Word? Is it important in your life? Is it relevant? Is it relevant to you in the century in which we live? Is it relevant to you in your marriage, in your life, and, and on where you live, in your job? Is it relevant? Do you accept it as a Word of God? Do you accept all of it as inspired Word of God? 
Paul said all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's God breathed and it's profitable for doctrines, for teaching and reproof and correction and instruction in righteousness. So we have to receive it with meekness. And a question would be to me, and this sermon is for me, and I've heard it several times uh, this past week and, and earlier this morning. And so it's for me as well as all of us. Are, but are, are we open to receiving what God wants to say to us through the Word of God? Are you teachable? I, excuse me. I have received some letters uh, through the years, as all pastors do. Some of them are encouraging. Some of them are signed. Some are unsigned. <clears throat> years ago, now I received a letter from a person who signed the letter. They signed it. They were not hesitant to let me know who they were. I had preached from uh, one of the letters of the Apostle Paul the previous Sunday. <clears throat> and this person said to me in the letter, they were not criticizing my approach to preaching, but this person said, I accept the red letters and the words of Jesus, but I don't accept the words of Paul. Now, knowing that person, and I reflected back on what I preached on, I realized that I shared a passage of Scripture that this person didn't like and they didn't want to hear. But you're not going to be blessed. You and I are not going to grow. We're not going to be mature as believers. We're not going to be blessed unless we receive the Word of God and unless we're teachable. Jesus told a parable, it's recorded in Matthew chapter 13, about <clears throat> sower went out to sow. Some of the seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls devoured it. <clears throat> some fell on stony ground, and some among thorns, but some fell on good ground. And that's, that's a story of uh, somebody sowing seed, but the seed is the Word of God. And so when Brother Mike preaches or someone else preaches or someone else teaches a, a lesson, it falls on one of those kind of soils in the heart. And unless our hearts are prepared and unless we're receptive to the Word of God, we won't be blessed. We have to come and accept it as God's Word. His inerrant, inspired, infallible Word of God. It is as relevant today as it was the day that it was penned by human authors inspired by the Holy Spirit. I know that it is not politically correct today. For those that are living together outside of marriage, it's not politically correct. Or those that choose an alternate lifestyle. Or a lot of other things it don't fit in. And I see why they don't like it. And it's not just them. It could be minor things in some respects as it is relates to you and me. But James says, lay aside all filthiness. Clean out, carry out the garbage. Overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness, with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Now he's writing to believers, so he's not talking about you don't get saved again as a believer, but it will save your life, it will change your life, it will bless your life if you receive the word of God. Question, are you willing to accept all of God's Word? Even though you may not understand it, you may not comprehend it all, none of us will. But are you willing to accept it in your life? 
If you are, you'll be blessed. If you don't, you won't. But then there's a third truth that James addresses in this passage of Scripture, not only to prepare our hearts for the Word of God, not only to receive it with meekness and be open to it, but put the Word of God into practice. Look at verse 22. But be doers of the Word. Another action statement. Be doers of the Word and not hearers only. I don't know how, how long ago it was, a number of years ago, that I think Baptists did, Baptist leadership in some respects, did us a disservice. You remember, and some of you will remember the days when we had those Sunday school uh, offering envelopes and you checked off on there, you brought your offering, you read your Bible. You came to Sunday school, and people got the idea, if I check that off, that's all I need to do. That's, that's okay. And I fear what's happening in many of our lives in our churches today is that we come in and we check it off. Hey, we went to Sunday school. Check it off. I drug the kids to church. Check it off. I gave an offering. Check it off. I went to Sunday school and read the quarterly. Check it off. Folks, that's not the end result that God's looking for. It's all about hearing and learning and studying and going out to do. Let's go back to football for a moment if I could, and some of you will relate to this and some of you won't, but, and it happens probably in a different form today, but back in the old days, we had in football what we called a skull session. <clears throat> that was a time when the coaches would get us in a room and we would get in there, and those days it was a chalkboard. And uh, on that chalkboard would be some X's and O's. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You remember those days? And, <clears throat> excuse me, and he would have plays drawn up on the board. Those represented the offenses, uh, usually offensive players. Uh, O's did, and the X's represented the defense. More often today, they use letters for the defensive players to help them better understand. But we would go in there, and we didn't have a skull session. We would go over the plays, and we would learn the plays and what you did on offense and what you did on defense, and we would go over it. And then he would say, all right, you guys go suit up. We're going out on the football field. And you know what we do in our churches, in our lives so much, is we have the skull session and we don't ever get on the playing field. Can you imagine me if I was sitting in there and I've been in those skull sessions and, and we've been in there and we've talked about the plays and the diagrams and it's drawn up and we had a playbook. And we always brought our playbook with us. Some of you don't get mad at me because next Sunday I'll be sitting back there and you can hit me, but a lot of folks don't bring their, bring their playbook with them to skull session. We always had a playbook, and this is our playbook. But, and I know you've got it on your phone or your iPad or you got it on something you got. Some of you got it memorized, I know. But can you imagine me when the coach says, all right, guys, we've, we've gone over these plays and these are what we're going to do. Now we're going to go get out and get on the field. And uh, can you imagine me saying, but, hey, coach, I just love skull session. Coach, I just love to hear you talk. And I love to see you diagram those things. Coach, I think I'll just stay in here. Can we just have another hour of school session? 
Hey, I heard, I heard that they're having a special skull session somewhere, three-day skull session. Can we go to that? Coach says, no. The reason we're having the skull session, the reason we're having the X's and O's is this. That we get out on the field and we put into action what we have learned. And that's James' point. That's what he's saying to us. We've got to receive the Word of God, prepare our hearts to receive it. Then we have to, with meekness, receive it. We've got to be willing to accept it, whatever it says. And then we need to get out and go do it. That coach <clears throat> said that he had a player the previous year who underperformed. Evidently, he knew the plays, and he had the talent, a degree of talent, or he would have never been drafted in the NFL. He just didn't perform on the field. And I think about my own Christian life. And for many years, I've tried to study the Word of God. I went to seminary to help learn, to prepare, to, to better study the Word of God. But I think about so many times that I've underperformed in what I knew. You ever been there, done that? underperformed and that's what he's wanting us to do you see we we grow we grow by doing I remember learning to ride a bicycle I had a cousin who lived in Atala who had a bicycle and I would go down to visit with his family and they would tell me about how to ride the bicycle, that you get on it and then you pedal and you steer and whatever. But I never learned to ride the bicycle until I got on it and did it. In high school, I took typing. In typing in those days, different today, I'm sure, but... In those days, everybody had a typewriter. If you're going to learn to type, you need a typewriter, right? The teacher taught us all the keys and all of that, but if you're going to learn to type, you type. And you learn to type by typing. I can't remember a time when I couldn't drive just a little bit. Judy wonders if I can drive today sometimes. But uh, my dad had a Model A Ford car. And I have memories of standing in the seat between his legs and him letting me try to steer that old car. I can remember, I don't know how old I was, but I can hear, still hear Daddy saying, see if you can hold it in a row going 30 miles an hour. Now, it was different holding a model in the road going 30 miles an hour than one with power steering. But you learn to drive by driving. And that's what James is, is teaching us. Prepare our heart to receive the Word of God. There need to be preparation. Receive it and accept it in our life. It's true whether we like it or not, whether it agrees with it, we agree with it or not. And put it into practice. 1970, I wanted to learn how to witness. I didn't know how to share my faith. I would invite people to go to church with us. I worked at Goodyear. But if they didn't live close enough to go to church with us, I didn't know what to do really. Wells Goble, who was preaching when Judy was saved, told us about a conference in, at the Ridgecrest Baptist Assembly Ground in uh, Black Mountain, North Carolina. I, along with two others, went to Ridgecrest. 
And there, we stayed there for a week. And we had classes and we had services at night. Oh, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. 1,300 people there. But in the mornings, we would, after a time of worship, we would have a time of instruction about how to take the Word of God and use the Word of God to share with people how to be saved. Well, after the second day, they said, we're going to go out witnessing this afternoon. Now, here was my thoughts. I've had a lot of thoughts that were not good or right. But I thought, I'm not ready to go out. I said to the teacher, I'm not ready. I need to learn more. I need to, I need, we need to stay more time, spend more time in here. I'm not ready to go out there to witness. But what they knew that I didn't know was I wasn't going to learn to witness just sitting in class for two or three or four more days. And so that afternoon, we went out in Black Mountain, North Carolina, with fear and trembling, with what knowledge that we had, and we witnessed. And I gained some confidence. And I was able to share with some people. And we went out the next day, and the next day. You see, we grow by putting into practice what we learn in the Word of God. You're going to have to listen to make sure that you, you really get what I'm saying here. We say, hey, we need to make sure that you bring your children and carry your family to church. That's important. But that's just the beginning point. You see, we need to be saying that you need to bring your family to church and teach them to put into practice what they've learned tomorrow. Or they won't ever grow. Just sitting in church and checking it off and sitting there 20 years won't change you. But if you receive a passage of Scripture and you're studying and you see what God has said and you receive it into your life and you go out tomorrow and put it into practice, it'll bring change. That's why that so many people have grown up in church and their lives have never been changed. Just sitting there, unless they're willing to receive the truth, won't change them. James gives us the illustration, and uh, I'm watching my watch, and if you're watching yours, well, we're right together. I'm almost through, okay? But James gives us an illustration that we can understand. He said, don't just be hearers only. You're deceiving yourself. He said, it's like somebody that stands a man that stands in front of a mirror. And he stands there and he sees who he is. And he walks away and forgets what he saw. And he doesn't do anything about it. That's like coming to church and sitting in Sunday school, small group, sitting in worship service and hearing Brother Mike preach and teach and walking out and forgetting what you've heard. Now I'm going to be sitting among you next Sunday unless somebody will let me pay them a little bit to let me preach again next Sunday somewhere. And you can pick on me, but question, how long does it take you to forget what you heard on Sunday how long does it take you to forget what you heard on Sunday? How many remember what Brother Mike preached last Sunday? What would you do with it? How have you used it in your life? You remember what you studied last Sunday in Sunday school? 
I know it's easy to forget, but because you walk out and you're thinking about eating and getting together and having a good time. And I know, I know the feeling because I've tried to think maybe on Saturday, now what was it I preached on last Sunday? But you have to plan to remember. And you see, that's what he says. Look at verse 24. For he observes himself, he goes away, and immediately he does what? He forgets. Some of you have great minds. All of you, I'm sure, have great minds. And you don't have to write anything down. I have to write things down. Then I try to wonder what I have written when I look at it. But I have to write things down to remember and it doesn't get any better, really. And I'm not implying you have to take notes. Maybe you make mental notes. But if we plan to do something with what we've heard, somehow we have to make preparation to remember it. Now, it may not be that, that you know, if Brother Mike was pe preaching on drinking alcohol or something, that don't relate to me. I don't drink alcohol. But there are things that is quite relevant to my life. So let me close by asking. When you look in the mirror of God's Word, what do you see? What do you see? He said, this person looks in the mirror and they forget what they see. Would you say, I look in the mirror and I see somebody that's seeking to practice what I learn? I see a forgetful here. You see, the gospel has to be acted upon. It's not enough to, to know the gospel or to be able to, to share the gospel. If you're not a believer, you've got to act upon it. And it's not enough to know about baptism, be able to explain it. You must act upon it if you've never been baptized. And the scriptures must be acted upon as well. You see, James concludes by saying this, verse 25. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and it's not a forgetful hearer he's not just somebody <clears throat> thinking about what am I going to do when I get out of here he's not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this one will be blessed in what he does <clears throat> so the blessed believer is one who does go to Bible study small group and goes to worship service and listens to the sermons. And he doesn't forget what he's heard, but he goes out and thinks and makes plans. How can I apply this in my life, to my family, to my life, or wherever during the week? God is not interested. Please hear me. I don't think you'll find anywhere where God is just interested in us showing up. And checking off, we've been in attendance. We're going to give an account for what we did with what we know. Could we pray together? <clears throat> Father, I'm so challenged by the writings of James. Father, I confess it's a lot easier to preach a sermon than it is to live it out. Easier to teach a lesson than it is to practice it through the week. It's easier to memorize what the Bible says than to do it sometimes. So I pray that you'll challenge us today that we would be a church and individuals that are not just hearers of good sermons by our pastor and by our teachers, the lessons, <clears throat> but we're those who are seeking to apply what you've taught us, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The most important thing is if you're not a believer, is to accept Christ. Our pastor would love to be here with you when you accept Christ, but 
If you're not saved, you don't need to put it off. You need to do it today. And I want to encourage you, if you're not a Christian, to come. There are people who will take the Word of God, sit down with you, and share with you how that you can simply receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. If you've not had believer's baptism, you need to act upon that if you're a believer. You could come and today, even though Brother Mike's not here and he would not baptize you today, you can come and say, I want to be baptized, and that information will be shared with him. Or maybe there are other decisions you need to make in your life that you want to come and make a commitment that I want to be a doer beginning today. And you want to make that commitment, then you come. Let's stand together. If it's convenient, I understand if it's not. But if it's convenient, you stand right now and you come. If the Lord is speaking to you about a decision you need to make. Just as I have you can come right now if God's spoken to you and you know that. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, choir. Uh, one of our deacons will be coming and leading us in a closing prayer. Dale's coming. And as he comes, I, I just want to say again, I appreciate Brother Mike allowing me the opportunity to share God's Word today. And thank you for giving me the privilege to share as well. You have been a, a great, uh, great listeners. And the question would be as we go, had you rather live beside a guy who can always quote the Bible or would you rather live by one who's always doing it? We've been blessed by hearing one of us preach this morning and share the word. We've also been challenged, uh, challenged to take what we know and be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. Yeah. Pray with me. God, we thank you in, that in Christ we have freedom. Um, we, we have a commitment to make. That commitment is to follow through on other commitments that we've made over the years. We pray that you give us the wherewithal to rest in your strength and your courage rather than ours alone. And Father, we ask you to be with our pastor and family, and Zach and his family is there away. Protect them. Encourage us as we follow through on this commitment. In Christ's name, amen.